it's always a blessing to be able to gather with y'all and um, So this morning I'm just going to read a chapter and point out a few things in it that uh, stood out to me as I was reading it. It'll be Matthew chapter 24. Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. But he answered them, You see all these things, do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. As he sat down on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered them, See that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. I guess that kind of stood out to me, uh, Jesus' answer. Like the first thing he points out is like, see that no one leads you astray. And it does seem that um, what is it, eschatology does can lead people astray, but maybe that's not the only thing. But, um, you know, he warns against um, false teachers and to be on your guard. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginnings, beginning of the birth pains. I guess I thought, had also thought on there about wars and rumors of wars or uh, maybe vaccines or things like that. You know, like, don't be alarmed, like, you know, people people are people and they just, like, people fight and kill each other and do whatever. Like, that's not, that's not our, that shouldn't be our focus, to be focused on the, the this earth, earthly things. They will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. For many prophets will arise and, may, and lead many astray. Be, and because lawlessness will be a, increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Uh, let's see, where was that? I guess I was thinking that because of tribulations, um, you know, many will fall away and get, betray one another, like, be at odds with each other, and because of whatever I guess it might be, and hate one another. And then I also thought, like, you know, like in these days, the lawlessness of the um, the gospel that's preached in most churches that the love of many will grow cold. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the Daniel prophet standing in the holy place let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let the one who is on the housetop not go down to take what is in his house. And let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. And alas, for the women who are pregnant and those who are nursing infants in those days, pray that your flight may not be in winter or on a Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now, nor and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, or there he is, 
Do not believe it, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. So if they say to you, Look, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. If they say, Look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. I guess that section there would seem to be, or at least some of it, be talking more of like the destruction of Jerusalem. About when you see the Jerusalem surrounded and flee to the... Um, mountains but I'm sure there's other things we could read out of it or use out of it as well for today immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call. They will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches, branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know the summer is near. So also when you see all these things, know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. But concerning the day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and one left. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know on that day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. I guess that um, verse 42 stood out a little bit to me, like, therefore stay awake, you know, like it's not, maybe uh, get distracted on, with other things, you know, we need to stay awake. And always be doing doing the will of the Father like now. You know, like, now is the time we have. And it, it may not be in a short time. Who then is faithful? Who then is the faithful and wise servant? whom his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that wicked servant says to himself, My master is delayed, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and eats and drinks with drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know, and will cut him in pieces, and put him with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I guess there's a, another place where it talks about a, 
um, the master finding his servant like doing doing what he's supposed to when he comes. I thought of reading 25 as well, but then I decided not to. Um, it also, what I see in it was just, you know, things about like in verse 13, watch therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour. Or, you know, like the, you know, when, when the bridegroom will return. Because if we're not ready or, if we're not ready for him when he comes, then we'll be left. Or in like the parable of the, let's see, which one is this? Of the talents, you know, like, um, where did I see that? You know, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. You know, if we're faithful over the little that we have, then um, that's that's what that's what counts to God is our is being faithful in what we have. I guess that's all I have, and. If brothers want to add or comment or take away or whatever they feel led to do. Thank you, Brother Walter. Uh, thank you for reading that, that passage and then also for touching on a few points in 25. I, I think the things you touched on are kind of key um, back when Tyler read this when he was here, uh, it kind of struck me then, too, that, that 25 kind of brings balance. Jesus is bringing awareness to these things that will happen in the end times, but then he tries to, to bring the focus, lest we get distracted, back to what the number one mission is here while we're here, and that's to be about the Master's business, to be to be trying to uh, be faithful with the knowledge that we have about the kingdom so that we're either counted a good and faithful servant or um, among those who watched and, and stayed awake and we don't let our focus shift to uh, either, either just primarily being the things that Jesus was discussing that would happen in the end times or, or some other thing. Anyway, I, I was blessed by it. Thank you, Walter. You had a, a question that popped in my mind about one of the verses here. Um, verse 20, But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. So the question is, why, would the Sabbath, why does the Sabbath day matter? You, you know, because um, we see Jesus' teachings, we can look at marriage and eye for eye, tooth for tooth, like he says, and it's separated. It, it's it's separated from the law. So the question that popped in my mind was, why does a Sabbath day matter? Even like this is after the Lord's, after he was crucified and resurrected. So it's like, well, why does a Sabbath day matter? Um, if anyone has any insight on that. That, that would be helpful. Uh, yeah, Darren, I, here's, here's my thoughts about that. And it's not an exhaustive study or, or thing, but I believe he's talking about the destruction of Jerusalem and that, um, and that Jerusalem, Jerusalem was full of Jewish people including Jewish Christians who didn't necessarily cease to keep uh, some some of the traditions or laws of the Mosaic law I, I think uh, I think that I think the Jewish Christians for at least a generation or two still 
uh, still kept the Sabbath. I think they probably still kept a lot of the dietary laws. Um, they weren't they weren't commanded to quit those, but but I think I think as we see the development of the church in Acts and the read the epistles, we recognize that. Um, the Gentiles were not bound to those same laws, and it was not Jesus was not like instituting those laws for the Gentiles and for the church, but that uh, he he came to raise the standard to a to a higher level. And but in in whatever way, <coughs> uh, doing things of the Jewish law was not violating the things that Jesus taught. A lot of the Jews kept on doing them. Uh, and in 70 AD when when Jerusalem was surrounded and the people had to flee for the for for several by the time Jerusalem actually got seized they say all the Christians had left um, and I I uh, uh, anyway I, I think that's why uh, good question though yeah, so even even just to further expound on it, like, we are to live with a clean and clear conscience. And I expect, like, those Jews, even, even though I'm persuaded that Jesus was not, is not requiring the Gentiles, or even the Jewish Christians, like, that he's not requiring of them to keep the seventh day holy, as, as, as was instituted in the, in the old law, like, they had a conscience. Uh, they may not have net, had knowledge of that. We, we see as we read through Acts, like the Jews, the believing Jews wanted to bind the Gentiles to their laws. They wanted them, they, they thought they needed to be circumcised. They thought they needed to keep the Sabbath. They thought they needed to keep the dietary laws. This is what they were used to, and this is what, what they had been taught ever since they could hear their mom and dad talk. And so these things are ingrained in them, and it, it took a lot of persuasion from Paul and Peter and, and these guys to convince the Jews that, uh, that they should not bind these things on, on Gentile believers. And, in, and even with all the trying that they did to, convi to persuade them, some of them still weren't persuaded. Um, and, and we see Paul fighting for this through his epistles. You know, if you read Galatians, you see it a lot, um, and and other epistles. But it wasn't wrong that the Jews themselves would have kept on keeping the Sabbath, I think. Like, in fact, if, if their conscience would have been bothered, um, if they did not keep it, they should have kept it. Whatever is not done of faith is sin. Um, if... If they kept on doing it because it wasn't wrong to do it, in order to, uh, in or w with with a mindset of like winning the Jews to Christ, that that's reasonable. Um, I didn't 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 Paul say something like to the Jew I became a Jew and to the Gentile a Gentile? Uh, I I think. Those things can be taken way too far, but like, <clears throat> it's it's reasonable to do things within reason that somebody is accustomed to in order to not to not on on first appearance have a great big stumbling block there. Um, you know, all those things can can have its limits and can go too far and. Uh, but yeah, I, I think Jesus knew what was going to happen. I think he knew exactly what was going to happen there in, in Jerusalem in his destruction and who was going to be there. And Obviously, I think he knew how the Jews were going to live out Christianity and how the Gentiles were going to be grafted in and all that. <coughs> anyway, oh, that's, that's what I think about it.